Hello and welcome to Euphoria TV Breaking News. My name is Dr David Bull. I'm a medical journalist and I'm thrilled to be your host for this, our second show of June 2021. Now this show is all about new therapies being researched and developed in the fight against COVID-19. In a minute I'll be talking to Professors Gunter Weiss and Marcus Nagel, both based at the Medical University of Innsbruck in Austria. And then we'll head to Sweden to speak to Professor Leif Birma, Professor of Allergy and Asthma Research at the University of Lund. Last year, our lives were turned upside down with the emergence of COVID-19 and the global pandemic that subsequently ensued. Globally, there have now been over 165 million cases and over 3.5 million people have died. The development of multiple vaccines has been a game changer though, particularly for the wealthier industrialised countries that can afford them. And here in the United Kingdom, over 37 million people have now had their first vaccine and over 20 million have had both vaccines. The incidence of new COVID infections is falling dramatically despite the emergence of new variants. But this is not the case worldwide. And of course, vaccines are only part of the solution to get out of this pandemic. And there is an urgent need for antiviral treatments to become available and urgent research is needed on novel and old molecules with antiviral properties. One of the avenues of research is into long-lived oxidants or chloramines, which are produced by activated granulocytes and monocytes. And of particular interest is N-chlorotaurine, which has broad spectrum microbicidal activity. So here to tell us more are Professor Gunter Weiss and Professor Marcus Nagel, both based at the Medical University of Innsbruck in Austria. Professors, it is very good to see you. Thank you for joining me. Marcus, let's just start at the beginning. Could you explain what N-chlorotaurine is and what efficacy has been proven by your research team? Yeah, thank you very much. Um, uh, N-chlorotaurine has been actually invented in 1971 by Polish um, researchers. It has been found in the innate immune defense system um, as a product of human granulocytes and monocytes. And it's actually 50 years now. We have an anniversary, 50 years anniversary of n It is uh, in these uh, cells, it has been shown uh, that it has uh, anti-inflammatory effects uh, at first. This was in the 1980s and in 1989. My former supervisor, Professor Godardi, has uh, found uh, the chemical synthesis of the sodium salt of n And since then, it was feasible uh, to work with it in the lab and also to use it later on in clinical studies. Um, the n um, showed uh, broad-spectrum microbicidal activity against uh, bacteria, viruses, uh, fungi, and uh, also uh, protozoa. Um, and uh, we found that the antimicrobial activity is uh, not so, so fast. And with uh, alcohols, for example, huh, it's a mild antiseptic of the human body, but uh, therefore it's very well tolerated and these uh, were basically uh, was the basics for uh, further development um, of the substance uh, later on. So we have a broad spectrum microbicidal activity and also anti-inflammatory properties. Well, it sounds absolutely incredible. So um, let me ask you, Gunter, how is n chlorotorin applied and how does it work? In principle, it uh, can be applied in two ways, uh, either uh, via a spray or via inhalation. And uh, principally, it works uh, undirected against all kinds of microbes, including viruses. And therefore, it's uh, really uh, applicable in the early phase of uh, COVID-19 infection, where the virus play a major role. And reducing virus load is uh, really a prerequisite for better infection control. So you may apply this drug either uh, via nasal spray in patients who have been tested and being symptomatic for the infection uh, in an outpatient uh, setting, 
or later on if patients have more severe disease needing hospitalization because of respiratory distress and uh, reduced oxygenation, um, they may benefit from inhalation therapy where uh, N-chlorotherine is put into apparatus. So Gunter, I think it's also just worth pointing out for our viewers, just do you want to outline the difference between an antiseptic like n chlorotorine and antibiotics? Because there is a very big difference, isn't there? Sure, there's a big difference. Uh, antiseptics works against uh, all kinds of microbes uh, by uh, inducing oxidative stress and destroying membranes or uh, specific metabolic uh, pathways. Also probably by improving immune responses to the to, to the uh, pathogens and normally there is no real resistance mechanism against microbes. Antibiotics uh, exclusively work against uh, bacteria. They have specific targets and bacteria can induce or uh, select uh, resistance patterns. So with the use of antibiotics, you may also uh, see resistance emerging and uh, this uh, makes uh, antibiotics uh, not uh, be applicable to all kinds of infections. In addition, what is also of importance, antibiotics only work against bacteria, but not against viruses. That's very helpful. Thank you very much indeed. Marcus, do you want to add anything to that about how it works? Yes, it works um, oxidizing and chlorinating. And at first, um, it uh, chlorinates the surface of microorganisms. You can, we call this um, chlorine cover. So the whole surface is, is covered by active chlorine. And this inactivates particularly proteins uh, of the surface, which are necessary um, for the microorganisms to attach human cells and to survive in the human body and uh, because of that um, they lose virulence uh, immediately and the innate immunity and also the specific immunity of the human defense system can eliminate uh, the microorganisms then uh, much better. The next step is uh, penetration. A few minutes later it comes to a penetration of the active chlorine uh, into the microorganisms and this leads to um, inactivation of essential enzymes and essential uh, structures uh, of the microorganisms and uh, then the uh, next step is actually killing of these uh, microorganisms and in addition the enchlorotherine also inactivates uh, toxins of the microorganisms toxins of bacteria and toxins of uh, fungi for example and uh, this is also essential uh, for treatment and overcoming an infection. So Gunther, perhaps you, for the clinicians uh, who are watching this, perhaps you could outline then which patients would benefit from uh, N-chlorotorine? Uh, there have been several uh, phase one and phase two studies, but also in vitro evidence showing that N-chlorotorine is effective against a number of infections. So in terms of COVID-19, uh, it would make sense to use this uh, substance as early as possible when the virus is still active and the major driver of infection. So number one is uh, those patients who have been diagnosed uh, for COVID-19 with specific symptoms. They may use it uh, as a nasal spray or probably also in a home inhalation setting uh, to reduce the viral uh, numbers in the nasopharyngeal tract in order to uh, improve the clearance of the virus and probably also to ameliorate in the immune responses. And this also holds true for patients with, who have been hospitalized for more advanced disease because of uh, pulmonary problems with low oxygenation. Those patients may benefit from the use of n uh, put into an inhalator or specific apparatus, uh, which the same idea to reduce the viral numbers and to improve antiviral immune responses, a concept which has to be proven in phase three trials. And with the idea that you not only improve the, uh, the behavior of the patients, but also to reduce the likelihood of being transferred to an intensive care unit for the need of non-invasive uh, non or invasive mechanical ventilation. And Marcus, it can be used for other things as well as COVID-19, can't it? Things like conjunctivitis and external lotitis. Yes, that's right. Um, uh, COVID infection is only uh, one um, uh, indication. Um, we can use it for, for example, for a common cold in the upper respiratory tract or for other viruses like influenza and respiratory syncytial virus in the lower respiratory tract. 
uh, other indications are skin infections, for example, um, like curel, purulently coated uh, curel uh, ulcerations. Yeah, we have already done uh, phase two uh, clinical, uh, phase two clinical study. Uh, such studies have also been done in uh, conjunctivitis or in external otitis um, with a good uh, success. Also, other things are, for example, uh, irrigation of the urinary bladder in case of uh, urinary tract infections in, in some special uh, patients which have, uh, uh, for example, uh, tetraplegia or something like that. Uh, and um, and uh, further on the skin and other possibilities, for example, herpetic uh, infections. So there are many possibilities and basically uh, every uh, plate or every site, body site, huh, which uh, can be uh, treated by topical application is possible. And I assume there are many advantages, such as the broad spectrum use for it, the anti-inflammatory activity. Just outline some of the advantages. The, the, one of the main advantages is as an, act, as an active chlorine compound. It is active against uh, all kinds of uh, pathogens. Uh, uh, and um, it is special for enchlorotorin is that its activity is uh, not decreased but enhanced uh, in the presence of um, human body fluids and uh, exudates. This is due to, to the chemistry of the substance, to chlor chlorine transfer reactions. Um, a second advantage uh, is that there is no resistance uh, development against enchlorotorin. Um, it has anti-inflammatory properties, which are also very interesting in, for COVID patients, for example. And uh, as an endogenous mild antiseptic, it's very well tolerated locally. And uh, there are no systemic adverse effects uh, because it decays to taurine and uh, chloride, which are abundant in the human body anyway. Well, well, it sounds incredibly exciting. I wish you a great deal uh, of luck with your research. Thank you very much indeed to Professor Gunter Weiss and Marcus Nagel. Thank you. Bye-bye. Well, to put this in context with how it may help in the COVID-19 pandemic is Professor Leif Bierma. He is Professor of Allergy and Asthma Research at the University of Lund in Sweden. It is very good to see you once again, uh, Leif. Thank you very much indeed for joining me. Let me just start by asking you, what do you consider the added value of antiviral drugs beyond vaccines for COVID-19? The added value is that we have learned to treat different steps of the COVID infection. First, to prevent infection that the virus entered the body, and then how to take care of the early inflammatory response. So different virus strategies have different effects, and the combination is what lead to success. To success. Um, could you outline for us which antiviral drugs are in the pipeline to help overcome the uh, COVID-19 pandemic? There are a number of small molecules that uh, interact with the receptor on the on the COVID virus, so to prevent the virus to bind to the cells. And uh, probably it's not enough with one. You need uh, several to put them in the combination. And there are very interesting studies going on looking at this now. So, so am I right in thinking that really the patients that would benefit, are we talking from these antiviral drugs, are we talking just stopping the virus uh, attaching and replicating? Is this about early stage disease only or is this going to be used in, in later treatment as well? Well, in the early stage, for example, it's already shown now that you can use some inhaled corticosteroids in the early phase when you are, have a confirmed infection. So by using this in moderate to high dose, you can prevent the disease from getting into a more severe disease. I mean, when we look back, the last 15 months has been an absolute roller coaster. And of course, we're now at a stage where many people have had one, if not two vaccines and things are looking up. But if we were to, to look forward 15 months and the fact that people are looking at these new molecules and looking at various different strategies, do you think we're going to see a, a big change in the way that we, we, we treat COVID and the way we prevent COVID? Yeah, we will, we will learn more how to use the cocktail. 
a little bit better to prevent the virus from entering the body, a little bit better to prevent the inflammatory response to be too severe, and very much better in order to prevent severe disease from getting lethal. So uh, all these steps need to be handled as carefully as possible. And that's what has been happened now. We have learned to know the disease in the different phases and thereby also adjust the treatment accordingly. Well, I think it's a very exciting time and the research obviously is, is absolutely paramount. Thank you very much indeed, Professor Bioma. Thank you. Well, that's it for this edition of Euphoria TV Breaking News. Many thanks to my guests, to Professors Weiss, Nagel and Bjorma for truly fantastic insights. It is a really exciting field of medicine to be working in right now, and we really do hope that the research bears dividends in combating the global pandemic of COVID-19. Now, you can find more information about Euphoria and register for the Euphoria meetings on the euphoria.eu website, where you can also sign up to receive the latest news via email. You can also follow us on Twitter. The address is at Euphoria. But that's it for this show. See you soon, and thank you for watching.